Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, season 1 of the Wheel of Time series has just ended with episode 8, The Eye of the World. And going into this episode, I went in with very high expectations, which was a mistake. I thought last week's episode was one of the best, but not this one. This episode felt very shaky. The CGI was not very good. There were some scenes that felt very out of place. But overall, there were still some really good moments. And having seen the entire season now, I think there is one thing that this show really needs. And that's more episodes. Eight episodes is just not enough. I think the show can be much better if it only had two more episodes. It looks like this episode is setting up both The Great Hunt and The Dragon Reborn. And with just 8 episodes, I hope they managed to make it work. But overall, I thought this episode was not one of the best, but it was definitely not one of the worst. This episode still had some amazing moments. So, without any further ado, let's talk about those moments. At number 5, I have the cold open, Louis Theron Telemann and the Age of Legends. Although I am a bit disappointed by not seeing the prologue to the book in the show, at least we got this. We see Louis Theron speaking to La Traposai about how to go about defeating the Dark One and the whole time they are speaking in the old tongue which was nice to see. The argument between these two pretty much summarizes what ultimately happened to the One Power and the Age of Legends and seeing the Age of Legends on screen is something that I never thought I would see. This looks like straight up sci-fi because that's exactly what it is. The Age of Legends was a utopia and humanity was at its peak. Having a world go from its absolute best to its worst is not something I see a lot in books and much less in television and that's one of the most interesting things about the Wheel of Time and here it was shown perfectly. But correct me if I'm wrong but at this point in the Age of Legends aren't they supposed to be in the middle of a desperate war against the Dark One? I say this because the world looks very peaceful and normal but maybe I'm wrong. At number 4 I have Pat and Fane. So, throughout the entire season, Pat and Fane has been appearing here and there and acting very creepy and now we see him here in a much prevalent manner. He's accompanied by two fates and together they enter the castle and attack Perrin's group and it looks like he kills Loyo and Uno but I'm definitely not buying it. Both of them were still moving at the end. Fane takes the Horn of Valir, which was hidden under the throne of Faldara. In the books, the horn is found at the Eye of the World, but I don't really mind this change, it's not a big deal. And then Perrin confronts Pat and Fane, and Fane reveals that he is a dark friend, and that he knew that there were five Tiberian at the two rivers, and that's why the Trollocs attacked their village. And this is something that I'm bothered by. How does the Dark One know about the Tiberian? I remember in episode 1, Moraine also says that there's 5 Tiberian at the two rivers, but how? How does everyone know this? They really need to address this in the future. But anyway, Pat and Fane takes the Horn of Valir and it looks like he also has another interesting item in his possession, I think. This dagger looks like a Matt's Shadow Logo dagger and that begs the question, how did Fane get it? Last time we saw it, Lan had put it under a blanket after Moraine cured Matt, but after that, who knows, we'll just have to see. Pat and Fane leaves with the Horn of Valir and this sets up the Great Hunt for the next season. And speaking of the Great Hunt, let's talk about the Sun Chan. At number 3 I have the final scene in the episode, which is a very short scene, but come on, it's the bloody Sun Chan. I definitely didn't expect to see them in season 1, but I am not complaining. The Sun Chan are one of my favorite cultures in the entire series because they are very interesting and chaotic. I don't want to get into spoilers, but let's just say that the Sun Chan are not to be messed with and they get shit done. When I first saw the channelers, I thought that they looked kind of goofy, but the more I look at them, the more I'm into it. 
and the guards or they might be soldiers i'm not sure but look at them that helmet looks like a skeleton imagine going into battle against them and they look like this that's terrifying and i can't wait to see them in action and those guys on top i don't know what they are but they look freaky their ships also look incredible i do like their style so far in the books the sunshine armor has a crazy look they have an insect theme if i remember correctly and that just adds to their coolness in my opinion so far the sunshine look very cool and menacing and i hope that for next season they do the insect theme justice at number two i have the battle at tyrone's gap Okay, so overall, I really liked this entire sequence, but it did have some weird scenes, and by weird, I mean bad, including the worst scene in the entire season, in my opinion, but it was still epic enough to be in my number two, so let's start from the beginning. Lord Agomar and his army prepare for what they think is the last battle, and they have a really cool setup here. They have a huge wall with a bunch of windows that they use to fire arrows. This kind of reminded me of the wall in Game of Thrones, but this wall turns out to be kind of useless because the Trollocs do get through and Lord Agomar is killed. I personally don't think that he is dead because Agomar is one of the five great captains, so having him die like this would be very underwhelming. The Trollocs manage to get through, but Lady Amalisa awaits with the Wayne, Nynaeve, and two other channelers, and they all link with Lady Amalisa, and she unleashes the one power on the Trolloc army and destroys them. Lady Amalisa cannot let go of the one power, and as a consequence, she and the others are burnt out, and this includes Nynaeve. Nynaeve being burnt out is in my opinion the worst scene in season 1 because it's so dumb and unnecessary. She is immediately brought back by Ewain, I think. This scene has no point and it's kind of confusing. How can she be brought back after being burnt out? How did Ewain heal her? Or maybe she healed herself? I'm not sure, but at least they did a really good job at showing how the one power can burn out the user. I always try not to be negative, but this scene was just dumb in my opinion. And the whole fake out death trope is being overused. I could turn out to be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was used four times in this episode with Nynaeve, Agomar, Loyal, and Uno. Like I said, I did enjoy this sequence, it's just this one scene that really bothered me. But now, let's talk about my favorite moment in the entire episode. At number 1, I have Rand confronting the Dark One at the Eye of the World. This was definitely my favorite part of the episode. Rand confronting the Dark One in both his dream and in the real world. I'm not gonna use spoilers, but if you've read the entire series, this has some major, you know what, vibes, and I really liked it. Throughout this confrontation, the Dark One tries to turn Rand to the shadow by showing him that his dream of being with the Wayne and having the perfect life is possible, but Rand ultimately sees through his bullcrap and denies him. Rand uses the Sa'angriel that Moraine gave him to destroy the Dark One, but I think that this is pretty much a setup, and Rand was used by the Dark One to destroy this. This symbol on the floor is one of the seals to the Dark One's prison, I'm pretty sure. Moraine says that it's made out of Quendiar, which is the material that the seals are made out of. When Rand destroys the Dark One, he smiles, pretty much letting us know that everything is going according to his plan. This is not confirmed in the episode, but if it is true, then this is a great change from the books. This episode overall was not one of the best, but the more I think about it and talk about it, the more it grows on me. I might have been a bit harsh at the beginning of the video, but I still think that the episode was a bit shaky and all over the place, 
The Sunshine were definitely the biggest surprise for me because I was not expecting them in season 1 and now I can't wait to see them next season. I hope that future seasons have more episodes because I think that that's the biggest problem at the moment. And that's it for the video everyone. I want to wish you happy holidays, stay safe, and I'll see you next year. Thank you for watching.